Hey, Connecting Church friends and family. Welcome to Church at Home, January 21st. Unfortunately, with the weather on Friday and Harford County Public Schools shutting down all activities for the weekend, that puts us without a home, kind of last minute. And so where one door closes, another opportunity comes to us. And that is to just have some time with your family at home, reflecting on God's word and God's truth together. And so what I want to do in five minutes is walk through the passage of Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 38, and kind of set the tone and share a couple ideas that will help us to discuss this passage, learn this passage together as a family, wherever you're at. And so let me read this passage to you and then set you up with some discussion questions to help further the conversation. Mark chapter 1, verse 29 through 38 says this. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went into Simon and Andrew's house with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law was lying in the bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he went to her, took her by the hand, and raised her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. Then, or when evening came, after the sun had set, they brought to him all those who were sick and demon-possessed, and the whole town was assembled at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out and made his way to a deserted place. And there he was praying. Simon and his company or companions searched for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. This is why I have come. All throughout January, we've been just looking at different missionary passages, or I should say thinking about healthy habits that help us to live as God's missionary, to live kind of your best 2024 life for your soul. We talked about prayer. We talked about Bible reading. We've talked about community. And I think this passage in Mark chapter one, Jesus models some of the things we've talked about and just the priority of missions, priority of helping others, and the priority of spending time with the Father. And so there are three takeaways I want to look at as we think about this passage. And here's the first one. We serve Jesus and share Jesus as we are healed and helped by Jesus. What you see here is, is Peter's mother-in-law. Well, I think it's significant that as soon as she's healed, the first thing she does is she serves Jesus. She serves the disciples. She steps in and she helps them. It's like immediately when she the fever is gone, she jumps into the service role. And that that is a picture of really what happens as Jesus works in our lives, is that as he heals us, as he helps us, as he works in our lives, it's not just for us. We don't just throw a party where it's all about us, but rather Jesus' work in our lives mobilizes us to engage and help others. But then even as Jesus begins to heal others, it says that the whole town began to assemble by him, began to come to him, and he healed many. He helped many at the town. And as Jesus helped others, others brought others to Jesus. So this is such a catalytic picture that when Jesus starts working in your life, starts working in your neighbor's life, starts working in your family, others see that and they want to know Jesus. And so we serve Jesus and we share Jesus as we see the power of Jesus in our lives. The second thing we see in this passage is just that we serve Jesus out of a relationship with God. Now, Jesus was on a mission from God. Jesus was on a purpose from God. Uh, he came to preach the gospel. He came to heal. He came to establish the kingdom. He came to do the work on the cross. But his mission didn't neglect his intimacy with God the Father. It said that very early the next morning, after this massive day of ministry, very early the next morning, he got up to go and be alone with God. When it was very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up, went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And it just teaches us that there is a danger in serving others and doing ministry and in all the things I've talked about, Bible reading, prayer, uh, community, serving in the church, all these great things that we can do from a reservoir of ourselves not from a deepening and deeper relationship with the Father. Take time, these habits, prayer, Bible intake, community, all these things we've talked about in this series should be ways that we draw close to God, we fall in love with Jesus, 
And so we need to find those times to pause because it's from an overflow of our relationship that will best serve others and share the good news of Christ. It's from an overflow of our intimacy with the Father. And then the last thing I love about this passage is that when, he's, when Jesus is finally confronted by the disciples, when they, they, they go looking for him and they find him in that deserted place, they come to him, they say, the whole town's looking for you. And Jesus' is, Jesus simple response was, let's go to other villages to preach there too, because this is why I have come. The third principle is this, we always have to keep the big picture of the mission of God in front of us. There are so many needs around Jesus and there's so many needs around your life But there is one most important need, and that is to know Jesus, who is the Savior, who who died on the cross for our sins, who brings us forgiveness and restoration with our relationship with God. And we can, he can heal the sick. We can go out and do soup kitchens and meet financial needs and do all these sorts of practical things, which are good and necessary. But the one greatest and ultimate need is not those things but it's our need to hear the gospel, to hear the good news of Christ and have a relationship with him. And so he just knows his mission. I must go and preach there too. This is why I've come. Jesus is focused on the mission and what matters most. And so those three things help us to understand this passage and to walk forward with the good news of Jesus. I hope that helps you understand this passage. Attached to this uh, YouTube uh, channel, you can look at in the comments and see some discussion questions as well as the PDF guide that we've emailed. I hope you have a great conversation with your family about ways to live this passage out. Have an awesome Sunday, and we can't wait to see you next week.